Okay, excuse the sweatiness here, I've just had a workout, so I wanted to, just like old times, jump on and have a little chat about something that's just kind of popped into my head. So if you ever needed any proof that fertilizer really does work in pot plants, then I've got the perfect little bit of proof, or certainly an indication that it's worked. So I just want you to take a look at this old video that I took over the last few months of my two impatiens plants, or impatience plants, depending on how you pronounce it couple of plants that do evolve into or grow into like a shrubby kind of a plant really nice plants in my opinion but they weren't looking too nice so take a look at this so i've still got they almost look chlorotic you know it's it's kind of like a, uh, the spider mite symptoms as well but since I've been using the sulfur, the growth has been brilliant. I mean, you can see the new leaves here. See how the new leaves are kind of a much deeper green, much more glossy compared to the older yellowing one. So yeah, I'm really pleased with that. I know it's not gonna win any prizes, but compared to what it's done so far all year, it's limped along. And now both of them are looking like really good, strong plants ready to do uh, the thing in the coming season. And now take a look at these babies. These are looking superb. I cannot believe the difference some fertilizer has taken. And this has really, probably uh, I'd say about six weeks it's taken for them to grow into this kind of state it's not the temperatures it's not the light of course that has an effect but what you just saw previously they looked like that last year i know they had a case of spider mite but once the spider mite had gone nothing really improved and it's only by fertilizing that i've managed to change the color of these leaves all that chloroticness that's a word all that chlorotic you can tell it's live not the, all that chlorotic effect has disappeared and they look really green shiny healthy leaves look at the blooms down here look at that so unusual for a plant I mean, it's really strange because it holds them very close to the stem underneath the leaves so you've got to kind of go hunting for them but i kind of like that because it's unusual this one over here, oh by the way, this one is uh, Impatiens niam, niamensis, and this one is Impatiens bicordata crossed with something else. I'll have a look at the label in a minute, I can't remember what it is. Um, this one holds them a little bit higher up, but you can see what a tremendous plant that is. Now look at the size of it. it actually, both of them are gonna need repotting because they really quickly wilt now in this kind of, of uh, temperatures as we're into spring now. But I think that is really a very good demonstration of what can happen if you underfeed your plants or if you don't give them the one key nutrient that they need. And that's the key, isn't it? Because if you remember, as we learned a few weeks ago, me included, that a plant will only grow as well as the nutrients that it's getting and it's that one nutrient that it's missing that will stunt its growth it only needs to be missing one of those key nutrients and of course it's our job to try and find what that is now out in the wild of course they don't have similar problems it's because it's in a pot it's because it's in this false environment so I think they look absolutely superb so I just thought it was worth having a look at the, at the difference between what it looked like before the feed and then after the feed feed and of course you've got to be a little bit patient because when you do feed it it's not something that happens overnight it takes several weeks to actually get to this state or it has done with these plants in particular so if only I could do the same with orchids that's next on my list so I just thought I'd show you that and that's it for now I'll see you on the next one bye